Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-Step Recovery Fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any of them either. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 87, How to Attract Emotionally Available People. My history of relationships prior to recovery was that all of my partners were emotionally unavailable. I knew this was a pattern and I also understood that I was the common denominator in all those relationships. But until recovery, I had no idea what I was doing to attract and stay with emotionally unavailable partners. If that's you, I think I might be able to help, but you're probably not gonna like what I'm about to say, dear friend. Here's the thing, it's you, you're the problem you're more than likely attracting emotionally unavailable people because you're emotionally unavailable. Please hear me out. If I'm right and you don't listen, you could waste many more years trying to turn your partners into emotionally unavailable, excuse me, emotionally available people when A, that's not possible, and B, the root cause is you. You're incapable of being emotionally available yourself and therefore will not attract and stay with people who are. If you do listen, you just might learn something new and helpful and save your years, excuse me, save yourself years of agony and blame. The whole reason I decided to record this podcast is that someone I know read an article I published on Medium called Why Intimate Relationships Have Eluded You and How to Get Them. She told me that she really identified with what I had written about the fact that I didn't used to be able to be vulnerable with other people and that my main relationship pattern was that I was always with people who were emotionally unavailable. Until a couple of years into recovery, I didn't understand that one of the reasons I attracted emotionally unavailable people was that I was emotionally unavailable. So she asked me, okay, so how do I become emotionally available and how do I become vulnerable? And I said, great questions. You get coached by me. That's how you do it. Which by the way, she did become a client. You can thank her for asking me those very specific questions because they made me realize I need to create some content on this. As she and I talked about this, I found it really helpful to uncover my thinking about all this. I do a lot of my thinking out loud, which works really great for me given that I'm a coach and a podcaster, because I get to think out loud. Anyway, I realized in that conversation that there are certain things that I believe about this topic that I hadn't articulated out loud before which I'm going to do here by way of this conversation I had with her. What I said to her was, I think it really starts with self-honesty. I had been lying to myself my whole life. I kind of didn't really know I was doing that. For example, I acted as if I liked things I didn't. I didn't really allow myself to explore some things that I was interested in. And I can see now that it was because I cared more what other people thought of me than what I did. I've talked about that many times on this podcast and that coming to care more what I think of me than what others do is really the crux of me being able to have healthy boundaries. I've come to care more what I think about myself than what other people do. And what I mean by that is My personal integrity as a woman of honesty is more important to me than that you like me or think a certain thing of me. It used to be that I was willing to throw my integrity out the window for the opportunity to get you to think a certain thing of me, whether it was that I'm nice, generous, kind, smart, dependable, whatever. Now I care more what I think of me. 
I am a woman of integrity and I need to keep it that way or I'm never going to hold on to my recovery. I'll send myself into relapse if I don't hold on to my recovery and I don't want that to happen. So I want to be a woman of integrity. And a woman of integrity lives by her values, not by the values of the people around her. A woman of integrity is whole. She does not have a cracked foundation. The way I think of it is this. I can be rocked by what happens to me now, but I won't be shattered by it like I used to be. And that's because I am whole. Things happen that wound me, but they don't take away from my wholeness. So how do you become a person of integrity? You live your life by your own values, not the values of those around you, but your own. Your values help you decide how to live your life. In fact, in my trainings on boundaries, I talk about the importance of values when it comes to knowing where to set your boundaries. You start by deciding how you want to live your life, and that is by your values, and then you metaphorically draw a boundary around that. In other words, what do you need to have in place so that you can live your life by your values? I've learned that not just knowing my values is important, but also knowing which ones are more important and which ones are less important. Here's an example from my own life earlier this year. One of my side gigs is with a co-working place. By the way, it's called Known Coworking in New Haven. That's K-N-O-W-N. It's a pretty dope place virtually and physically. Check it out at nhvknown.com. When we opened back up from being shut down for quarantine, they asked me to come back to the space for 20 hours a week, which is what I was doing before quarantine. I used my values and their priority for me to determine how to make the decision about whether or not to go back. One of my very important values is my health. I didn't come this far in recovery to not take care of my physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Another very important value for me is my relationship with my sweetheart. He is over 60 and health compromised. Because that relationship is really important to me and my health is really important to me, I don't want to compromise my health or his by going to a place for 20 hours every single week. So I said no to going back to the physical space for 20 hours a week. I told them I'm willing to go to the space from time to time, but not for 20 hours, given the coronavirus. My health and my relationship are more important to me than the money. Staying home as a remote worker meant that I was going to have to remain at 10 hours per week, and that's fine with me. Knowing which of your values are more important than others is going to help you make decisions about how you run your life, just like in the example I gave. Now, back to being emotionally available and vulnerable. I have to become vulnerable to myself before I can become vulnerable to another person. What do I mean by that? I have to be really honest with myself and allow myself to really experiment with what is important to me about what I really want. I have to be honest with myself and then construct my life in such a way that I actually go after those things. It's only then that I can become emotionally available to other people and that is because I'm living in my integrity. I am whole. I don't have a cracked foundation. I can't be emotionally available to someone when I have a cracked foundation. People with cracked foundations attract people with cracked foundations. Being vulnerable means that I acknowledge that I am possibly going to get hurt. 
That is just the reality of human relationships. You're going to get hurt. It doesn't matter how loving the relationship is. There are things that are going to happen and you're going to hurt, get hurt. The question is, are you going to be destroyed by it? Or are you just going to be wounded by it? Prior to recovery, I wasn't able to be emotionally available with other people because I wasn't willing to be vulnerable. And that is because I had a cracked foundation. Your emotional availability, which is the thing that will attract emotionally available people to you, starts with your own integrity. It starts with being a person of honesty, doing what you say you're going to do, showing up for yourself, following through for yourself. I am now capable of being vulnerable with the right people because I know I'm not going to be destroyed if I get hurt. I might get wounded but I'm not going to be destroyed, which means I can become emotionally available. I'm not trying to protect myself by hiding behind various facades. What I used to do instead of being emotionally available was to be physically available. That is, I'd become sexually involved with my romantic partners much earlier than what I can now see was healthy. In my current relationship, which is the only healthy one I have ever had in my life, we developed emotional intimacy before we developed physical intimacy. I was 55 when I got into this relationship. I had been dating for almost 40 years and I tried it the other way around. I tried to be physically intimate with partners and then emotionally intimate. And it just doesn't work that way, at least not for me. It didn't work because I really wasn't capable of being emotionally available because I was trying to people please them. And now that I care more what I think of me than what other people think of me, that is, I live by my values, not theirs. I can say what's really going on with me. I can say things like, this isn't working for me, or I'm not comfortable with that. Or I'd really like it if we could blah, blah, blah. Whereas in the past, I was just like, whatever you want to do is fine with me. Emotionally available people want to be with people who know where they stand, who aren't trying to protect themselves by hiding behind masks or facades. Now, instead of trying to protect myself with facades, instead of morphing myself into different identities that weren't really mine, I have boundaries. Whole things have boundaries. And speaking of boundaries, I am launching a pilot group coaching program in January called Six Weeks to Better Boundaries with Barb. If you want more than just some information on boundaries and you're interested in a true transformation around your personal boundaries, this group is for you. I'll drop the link to find out more about it or to register in the show notes. Not only will you get support from me, but you'll get the benefit of working with other boundary builders, which I personally found to be imperative when I was learning how to establish healthy boundaries. Anyway, if you want to attract emotionally available people, you're going to have to get really honest with yourself about your preferences. You're going to have to start showing up for yourself. Stop abandoning yourself. This will create integrity, which is another way of saying it will create wholeness. You will not be so afraid of being vulnerable when you're whole because you will know you don't have cracks in your foundation. You know you will take care of yourself. You will not fall apart. You will not be completely destroyed when you get hurt because you're whole and because you know you will take care of yourself. Here's to your wholeness, my friends. Be well. That's it for today. Please share this episode with anyone who might find it helpful. 
If you like what you've heard here, you might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, then head on over to barbchat.net, or you can get on my calendar for a free 20-minute consultation to help you make lasting changes in your life, like I've made deep, lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. I'd love to chat with you. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast outlet. This helps other people find me. Thanks for listening.